My name is Captain Ashley Kessler. I'm on the teaching staff at San Jacinto College Maritime Technology and Training Center campus here in Houston, Texas. This radar video is on stabilization of radar and ARPAs. The objectives for this video on radar stabilization. At the end of this presentation, you will be able to explain and demonstrate radar ARPA stabilization methods. Two, you'll be able to explain inputs and outputs for one, sea stabilized radar ARPAs, two, ground stabilized radar ARPAs, three, echo reference or ground referencing on an ARPA, third, you'll be able to explain the use of each stabilization. Four, demonstrate true vectors on sea and ground stabilization. And fifth, you'll be able to explain and demonstrate navigation lines. This is going to be my reference or base slide. I'm going to be using ARPA true vectors. We're going to have a set and drift of 0, 090 0 degrees at 4 knots. Our own ship is heading 0, 0, 0 degrees at 10 knots. Out to the northeast, there's a contact going 220 degrees at 10 knots. Up to the northwest, there's a vessel that's dead in the water. And down to the southeast, there's a buoy. For sea stabilized radars and ARPAs, the required inputs are going to be a gyro compass, which is going to give us an output of a true course, input of a speed log, which is going to give us a true speed or speed through the water, and this is required for collision avoidance. This is what the navigation rule book is based on, true courses and true speeds. So here's my same diagram, and we're going to be C stabilized. ARPA true vectors again, everything else is exactly the same. So my own ship is going 0, 0, 0 degrees at 10 knots, and remember we have a 4 knot drift heading to the east. So what is my vector going to look like? Is it going to go straight up, or is it going to be skewed off to starboard? On a C stabilized radar, it's going to go due north at 10 knots. Everything's moving with the sea. That's the best analogy I have with this. This contact up to the east at 220 degrees at 10 knots, it's also going to have a 10 knot vector heading 220 degrees at 10 knots. This vessel dead in the water will not have a true vector have a relative vector but it will not have a true vector it's just floating with the water however this buoy down here to the southeast it will have a true vector will have a relative vector too but it'll have a true vector heading toward the west at four knots in the ARPA class this is one of the assessments you have to do to demonstrate to help calculate or estimate what the set and drift of the current is. How we do that, we acquire that buoy, and after it's acquired, we can get a set and drift for the sea stabilized radars. The output for the ARPA is going to give the range, the true bearing, the closest point of approach, time to closest point of approach. And it's going to say this buoy is on a heading of 270 degrees, and its speed through the water is 4 knots. But truthfully, the current is heading in the opposite direction. So the set is 090 degrees, and the drift is 4 knots. So we use this in ARPA to get an estimate about what the set and drift is.
ground stabilized possible inputs there's no required inputs but if you're on a radar you may have a global navigation satellite system a GPS you may have AIS information that's for the contacts only that doesn't necessarily ground stabilize the entire radar or you could bottom track your dual axis Doppler so the outputs for the GPS and the bottom track dual axis Doppler it's going to give us course over ground or COG and it's going to give us speed over ground or SOG and this is best suited for navigation so on my vessels when I was approaching a harbor depending on what the voyage plan says when I got near coastal I'm more affected by tides and currents and shallow water that affects stopping distances and turning distances I would get one of my x-ray band radars and I would ground stabilize it I could use that for navigation to make sure I was going to make the pilot station in time I keep the other x-ray band C stabilized and use that for collision avoidance So ARPA true vectors ground stabilized. Remember we have this set and drift heading easterly at four knots. So now we're going to be affected by the current on my ground stabilized radar. So my vessel going due north at 10 knots. Now I'm going to be skewed off to starboard a little bit because of that four knot current heading to the east. This contact up to the east, heading 220 degrees at 10 knots, this is going to be bucking the current a little bit. So the vector might be only 8 or 9, nine knots long, and it's going to head a little bit further south, maybe 210 degrees. Out to the northwest, this vessel dead in the water is going to have a 4 knot true vector heading to the east and this buoy down to the southeast it will not have anything because the buoy is ground stabilized to the bottom of the ocean they will also have relative vectors but these represents the true vectors on most ARPAs you can echo reference your radar this will also ground stabilize and what it does basically it says any track target can be selected as an echo reference so any you can do a ship you could do a buoy once selected this velocity is assumed to be zero knots and own ship speed is calculated based on this assumption and when you do select this as echo reference it puts an R right next to that contact today's world I do not know when or where we would actually use this so the input would be an acquired track contact most likely a buoy the output is going to be zero knots and this is also used for navigation so this echo referencing or ground referencing of the ARPA what it allows us to do we can observe the ground track of other vessels not great for collision avoidance but we can observe this ground track of how they're moving based on how the current is affecting us it allows for true motion parallel index lines and it allows for electronic navigation lines and map overlays for coastal and inland navigation this advantage of echo referencing it does not allow for true motion courses and speeds so we need this for that collision avoidance but it still has the possibility ARPA you can get a target swap or you can lose the acquisition of that target then you would have to reacquire that target again
one of the ways we used to use echo referencing was to set up navigation lines on our ARPA. Navigation lines are an SDCW assessment, but today's modern radars, all of them do not have navigation line features on them. They have other methods you can use, but no traditional navigation lines. And to set up these navigation lines, you could set it up by one, latitude and longitude, two, range and bearing, three, or by Cartesian coordinates was how I like to set mine up. You have to remember these navigation lines are long before we had any map chart overlays onto our radar or ARPA long before we had any electronic chart systems like an ECTUS today. So in the day, they were pretty valuable to us. Today with ECTUS, not so much. So the first thing we have to do, we have to acquire a buoy on the ARPA. Then we have to select the echo reference and to put this R right next to my echo reference buoy. Then I could draw my navigation lines using any of these three methods that I just mentioned. In most ARPAs, you could draw somewhere between 12 to 16 lines. So if you needed to draw your traffic lanes, you could draw your traffic lanes onto the navig right onto the ARPA. Then you could just navigate along the traffic lanes to make sure you stay inside the traffic lanes. As I mentioned, with Ectus today, nav lines seem to be a thing of the past. We also had a problem with this buoy right here, that if we lost the acquisition to that buoy, or a target swapped on to a ship or something else, then these navigation lines, they would start to float around this radar, which was useless again. We would have to go back, reacquire a buoy, echo reference it, then reset up our navigation lines. So the review objectives for stabilization methods. First, we explained and demonstrated radar ARPA stabilization methods. We explained the inputs and outputs for sea stabilized radars and ARPAs, two to ground stabilized radars and ARPAs, and then how to set up or use echo referencing on an ARPA. We explained the use of each of those stabilizations. Then we dem demonstrated vectors of sea and ground stabilization when we had a current. Then we explained and demonstrated navigation lines. If you have any comments or questions about this video, you're welcome to email me at my campus email address at ashley.kessler at sjcd.edu.